Guys, I got a lot of lists coming up for you. Something like six lists. So we're starting off with the top 10 best games. Thank you for being patient here towards the end of the month in January. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank G Fuel, G Unit, GG <laughs> uh, for uh, sponsoring our video. Click the link down below. I got the 30% off, which is the highest percent off that you can get on G Fuel. It supports the show every tub you get. It helps us out. So click those links down below. I hope you guys enjoy the list. This is best. We've got disappointing. We've got worse. We've got some movie lists and we got some anticipated games. So stay tuned for it all. Check it out. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, another kind of crappy year because of the pandemic. 2021, a lot of stuff rolled up over here. We had a lot of unfinished games, a lot of delays, but you know what? I still managed to find some gems this year. So here we are. These are the top 10 best games of 2021. Number 10. There were some pretty good indie games. And the first one, Inscription. And the less said about Inscription, the better. This is a game you need to experience for yourself as it quickly escalates. And that's about all I wanna say about this game. I love that, you know, this is an awesome title, an indie one, a horror card game strategy that has a wonderfully creative story with great atmosphere that's very very creepy at times and really mind-bending at others. It is a fantastic experience for any strategy, card game lover, or story lover, and it's at a really, really great price. Go experience this one. I'm glad I did. Number nine. There are many stories in our past. Many interesting, but most untold. And though they may be forgotten one day, there will always be others to rise from the void. Stories of wandering heroes. Another indie game on my list made it because of its pure addictive factor and the unique mechanics. Loop Hero is a roguelike deck builder RPG, only you can't control the dungeon crawling hero at all. You do control like building the world around him uh, that, that results in spawning the monsters, but th the goal is trying to keep him alive. So as these monsters drop loot, you equip him in the ways you think is best, and you sort of like, start to rebuild the world and their memories of what happened in this universe uh, before uh, taking that risk versus reward mechanic of going back to the camp and saving the items you gained before dying. Stories about terrible battles in strange lands. Both glorious Hero. 
even though it doesn't seem like it would be much fun, where the game kind of sort of plays itself, it is pretty awesome somehow maximizing and min-maxing and caring for your little guy who's running around and round until he's powerful enough to face the boss. It's simple, it's short, it's at a great price, and it's got some really great music. Loop Hero is a unique take on roguelikes that you need to play this year. Number eight. Kenna is beautiful, the animations are awesome, the music is whimsical, I love the cutscenes, I love the feeling that you get when you play it, and it's just goddamn aggressively adorable. It's <laughs> it's too cute. The little rot, I don't know why they're called rot, that, that ruins it, but the little rots that you use, you could attack that you use to attack people with and interact with the environment, they're just so damn cute. And you can even sit down with them and pet them and make them dance. Kiss. <laughs> Get out of here. It's fucking aggressively adorable. Aggressively adorable, yeah. Cute! Do a dance. All right, a point alone just for that. Kenna is a like a reduced price game. It's only forty dollars, and it gives you a like a fifteen hour Pixar like experience, like a playable Pixar movie. The, at least the character models look exactly like the Disney counterpart. It, it's got some touching moments, some solid gameplay, and it's family friendly, but entertaining enough for adults and everyone of all ages. It's just a really fun, solid, wholesome game. Found a friend. You gonna be my friend? Look at your little beans. <laughs> I shall add to my army of violent, vicious creatures. Kenna, conqueror of the land. <laughs> Check it out. of a spirit guide is a lonely one. Number seven. Resident Evil 4 VR. I've mostly ignored my Oculus Quest 2 headset. I've given it away to my family to use whenever they feel like, but as soon as Resident Evil 4 VR came out, they were like, Joe, Joe, you gotta try this out. So I put the headset on and I did it and it was freaking awesome. Now granted, I had the added bonus of never even getting to play Resident Evil 4 when it came out on what, like GameCube all those years ago? Like I never played it all the way through. I was only, 
going over to a friend's house. So to experience uh, this story for the first time in this creative VR remaster, it was awesome. And it made up for the fact that I still don't understand why Resident Evil 8 doesn't have VR support. I really still want that. Capcom, Oculus Studios, and Armature Studio are partnering to bring Resident Evil 4 to Quest 2. We can't wait for you to experience the world of Resident Evil in a new medium. It's immersive, comes with a first person perspective, and will bring new richness and depth to the Resident Evil 4 experience you know and love. The graphics here are great, the VR effect is really solid, and of course on top of all this, it's a really solid base game that everybody likes already. You've got yourself a hit, whether you're experiencing it for the first time in VR, or for the first time period, this is easily the best VR game of the year. And it, it makes me completely forget about the garbage trash that was Doom 3 VR. It's just that way, follow the signs. The board The board authorized you? Hmm. The board doesn't know the first thing about science. So, get this one, not that one. Number six. Returnal. This sci-fi loop roguelike was definitely way more my style than the inexplicable 10 out of 10 journalist darling masterpiece that was Deathloop. Look, Returnal is better in every way. It is, it immediately has more wonder and intrigue associated with it and dying it, 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 over and over in its first 30 minutes than the entire Deathloop game. My only hope is to break the cycle. the cycle breaks me. There were in fact a ton of roguelike games in 2021, but this one mixes those elements the best. With a bullet hell shoot 'em up, with a third person action adventure type game, this game is tough, it is compelling, and it is addictive. Uh -huh. right there, Damn it. it progressively gets really hard, harder and harder, but you get progressively better at mastering your movements and getting in a zone as the screen fills with tentacled chaos. It will piss you off. There, there is no doubt about that, and I put the game down after I started playing it towards the end of the year for stream until I wanted to pick it back up. What happens if they touch me? Get a little touch. Get a little touch. Get a little touch. Get, get a little touch. What? Oh, man. Oh, that feels good. So you, you thought I was going to die, Joe. But yeah, I, I wouldn't want something like that touching me. Getting sexually pleased. It's a sensual massage. Uh-huh. Authentic. There's no doubt that with the great anger comes great reward. Strange technology, rewarding gameplay, even as you're dying over and over, each run is different. Gameplay is the name of the game here in Returnal. And trust me, you're gonna return to it over and over. And frankly, PlayStation really killed it with their exclusives like Returnal in an otherwise down year for gaming. Finding our own answers. When all is lost. Number five. Yeah, me messing with all the tuning shit is terrible. No, idea. no, your car's awesome. Is it? Yeah, look. It drives upside down. <laughs> 
Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck you do? I don't know. <laughs> that was this is a bad idea tuning it. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Again. What is going on? Forza Horizon 5, easily the best racing game of 2021 is Forza Horizon 5. The boys played it and liked how easy this new title was to get into. Wait, I can do it again. I, oh, Rock. Oh. oh! Rewind, nothing happened. Y'all didn't see shit. That's a cool feature. And combine that with it being on Game Pass day one, and you have an extremely easy winner. Fuck out the way! Nope. Nope, don't get in front of me. Don't get in front of me! I gotta fight for my position. You son of a bitch! Whoa! Whoa. Hey, no! That's all we got it. You son of a bitch! I think you got him. Oh, uh, you don't. barely got him. All right, that's better than ninth. All right. It's not a podium spot. A map of Mexico in this open world racer that is so filled with content. With every event that it feels like it shows off the best of what the game has to offer each and every time. There are great tools to make your own tracks and bits. There are sound improvements from last year. Small little details that really make each car come alive. This is a card game that is incredible for even those who aren't massively into racing games. And if you are, you're gonna fall in love. Oh, the mad lad did it! <laughs> oh shit! Oh god, this is scary! Oh god! <laughs> he did it! I did it for you, Flippy and Togion! There are so many fun modes that they took from Forza 4 and put here in Forza 5 and then added new stuff. The value is insane. The different biomes, there's Baja, jungle, mountains, cities, beach, coastal towns, gorges, plains, deserts, volcano peaks, and even a fucking soccer stadium. It's awesome. There are over 500 vehicles with extensive improvements to the game mechanics itself from last year, and just a huge amount of customization and editing power behind this game. Forza is at its best right now. You need to go out and play it. First! <laughs> You're just on the Play. freeway, what do you mean first? <laughs> you see those moves? Pretty fucking sweet! Come yeah, on! It was a real happy accident. Uh, that was no accident. That was planned, sir. But drifting is getting better. Turn right. 200 yards. Turn <laughs> that was almost very nice. <laughs> I was trying to do stay on the road, damn it. Number four. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Please do not grab me, especially around my no no areas. It is very sensitive. Oh, I tripped. What is this? A nice bottle? Would you care to share? Oh, no, I guess we're gonna have to fight. Oh, no, no. She's too powerful. Powerful. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh, God, Americans are the worst. Lady D, come back. You can't run away from my love. Resident Evil Village. Set immediately following Resident Evil 7, Village really nails its new location, this, this Eastern European vibe where, again, castles and, 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 and dark pathways and hallways and uh, fucking werewolves, monsters, huge vampire ladies, a very sexy, huge vampire lady. Go to gfuel.com, use code angryjoe, and get yourself some maiden's blood. That's the only way. Take my money. Oh, I There's real meat that. in every tub. Okay. No, I can tell no, no, no. Here, you take this. Okay. Now you go. Out bye. the window. Bye-bye. Out the window. Bye-bye. No. 
filled with a bit more action than scares this time around, Village is nonetheless an entertaining ride from start to finish. You come into my house! Our house! You lay your filthy man's <laughs> on my daughters! Yo, daughters! And now you even try to steal my property! Our property? <laughs> That level of immersion from the first person perspective still works in its favor with some really creative bosses and some horrifying moments. That's your big headed baby! What the <laughs> fuck is that? Shoot it! Fucking shoot it. What the fuck? No, no, no. Laughing is very bad. Oh. Open the fucking door! It'll leave an impression on you for sure. <laughs> oh shit. No. This, just, this game just went up. Yeah, that I was, was like, the, is that, that gonna get you fucking run? <laughs> And it continues the case for Resident Evil being one of my favorite horror franchises out there. Though I think it is time we start to bring back some of the mainline series, you know, the well-known characters into the mix in the future. I am very excited to see where Capcom takes us in this franchise, but I do hope that they learn that they need to start ramping up that horror and not fall back into their past, the overly cringy action trappings. I got no time to explain. Ooh, I'm liking this. This one was in between Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 7. We just need a little bit more horror and then we're good. He's got Bob. Oh. <laughs> he blew up at Bob's head. <laughs> it's a massacre. Don't make me laugh. It's a fucking massacre. <laughs> oh, shit. This is a bad idea, Brandon. Number three. Ratchet, we are too late. Ratchet? Who? Ratchet and Clank rift apart, pushing the limits of the PS5's advanced SSD technology. Ratchet and Clank delivers one of the most impressive, seamless experiences I played all year. <laughs> yeah, see, I mean, this is fucking good enough to be a cutscene, and I'm literally yeah. playing the cutscene. Sure it's pretty cool. Stops, it doesn't, amazing. there's no transition between cutscene and gameplay. It's literally all awesome. The insane details on the extremely awe-inspiring visuals, it's like playing a Pixar film. I know I said that for Kenna, but this takes it to a 11. They crank that up to 11, it's even more so, right? It's big budget with extremely smooth animations. It is like playing a cutscene all game long. There are fun attacks, fun weapons to shoot enemies with, and an interesting rift type hook, right? To test the PS5's power as you go between worlds without a load screen or even so much as a hitch. It's fucking jaw dropping. It's amazing. God damn. This is yours right here. Pirate. 11 out of 10 right now. <laughs> Get off me. Oh, fuck. And great writing and likable characters elevate this already stellar title into Game of the Year territory. It is really a must own for any PlayStation 5 owner, taking full advantage of all of its new features. Insomniac Games somehow continues to push the themselves and the limit to realize their conceptual dreams. Well executed, guys. Right on. It's it's just the story that maybe is a little too sort of formulaic. We might 
might need a little extra oomph, but it's definitely family friendly, for fun, for all ages, and there's really not much more you can say. It's just a great time. <laughs> are you out, are you out of your mind? Yeah, really good. Really good opening. Yeah. Number two. Excuse me, bitch. I'm not the only one with hands around here. You open it. That's your job, though, isn't it? To help me? My job? When did you start paying me? You don't pay my bills. I'm not like your other floosy AI with your chi chis hanging out. I'm here to tell you what to do. Same thing over and over and over. Different missions. Though. Every time I get to a door, it's locked and I'm tired of it. Fine. I'll open the goddamn door. <sighs> but if I catch you looking at my ass again, I'm gonna me too you out of this franchise. Halo Infinite. It's been over 20 years of Halo and you think I'd be tired by now. And frankly, I was. Halo 4 and 5 made me lose that charm. But it's this Halo that managed to bring my love rushing back in the best way. This is hands down the best Halo 343 Studios has done to date. But it's also one of the more incomplete ones. This one is only bound to get better with time. But this nostalgic trip, it adds a key ingredient to an already masterpiece of a gameplay loop, the grapple hook. Yeah, it's only because, uh... Coco Punch! Oh, <laughs> Gunplay, grenades, Grapple. This makes for 10 out of 10 gameplay in this return to form entry in the franchise. It is awesome and multiplayer only adds to that package. It's just a shame that it's been marred by free to play trappings, the microtransactions, the terrible progression, the restrictive playlists are all symptoms of trying to squeeze as much money from that multiplayer player base as possible. And then the latest update of today, we have Bloody Blue. For fucking blue! They called it Lucky Blue at 800 coins. Is that, is that fucking blue? Is this, this is fucking blue. You're giving me a gun that's painted blue and you want to charge me- Roughly around $15. Are you out of your mind? Thankfully, 343 seems to be listening to feedback and addressing a lot of these issues. It's just a minor miracle then that the campaign and parts of the multiplayer came out this good. It shows how strong the Halo formula is. It opens up new story paths and I'm excited again to see where they take the series and how it expands the lore. Are these new enemies going to be really fun to fight against or is it going to be a colossal disappointment? I don't know, but the best first person shooter of 2021 was definitely Halo Infinite. Uh... Oh! <laughs> Fatality! Oh, <laughs> that was a fucking fatality Yikes. right there. Fatality. And then you put it on Game Pass Day 1? Come on! That is an amazing value, an amazing revelation, and something that brings uh, people just so much fun for not much cost. It's good. It's good for gaming. A song. Yeah, it's, uh, 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 the uh, song uh, you uh, can uh, hear. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> How comes you get all the cool gadgets? It takes two for immersing 
not one, but two players in a well-crafted game. It Takes Two takes my top spot. One of the best narratives that you can play all year. It's charming, it's funny, it's emotional, and it's fun as heck, fun as heck with all the variety. Are you ready? I have to hold left trigger. Gonna need a boost, eh? I did it! <laughs> Don't worry, you can trust me, Alex. Yeah. And I got it. Go! Oh, come on! My hair hit it! <laughs> really? Piece of shit. There is a reason it beat out all the other games at the Game Awards this year, and it's a reason that it's on my list. While OJ and Alex played this on stream and had a blast, it's on the top of their list as well. I shared this one with my family off screen, and you absolutely have to play it with a friend, or your girlfriend, or boyfriend, even better. The three. To the four, I thought you were moving. to the five, six, seven, eight, man. You were nine. messing up. Oh my god, OJ. I was going up top. I had let go of the goddamn I thing. I was going up top. <sighs> Or take, it, it, this concept is, it doesn't sound like it'd be fun. It's a, take a warring couple and, and add in some Toy Story and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And then, but then inject a fun art style and really cool games. And you've got a smart family adventure that has some really strong writing and genuine emotional moments that pull you into the story while simultaneously engaging you in its challenges. It's not just you, both of you. I shot the explosive, but he stood next to it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to cling to the wall. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> Here he comes. You killed me. I pressed the button. You did not. I pressed the button. You clearly did not press the button. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Take a warring couple, add in some Toy Story, some Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and it's like, what? And, and then add a fun visual style. And you've just, it managed to become a smart, brilliant, fun family adventure with some really strong writing and some genuinely emotional moments that pull you into its story while simultaneously engaging you in all of its variety of challenges. And not just you, both of you. Co-op feels like a dying art and it takes to elevates it to the top of its game. <laughs> Never let go. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> You're not as good as fingering. <laughs> yes. With its frantic genre swaps, it's tight cooperation. It starts, it's like predicting each other's moves and eventually working together in perfect sync. It's a feeling that's hard to match in other games when you get into it all. Plus, you're only asked to buy one copy with the friend pass. This game just feels right, gamer friendly, gaming as it should be. Instead of this gross, greedy AAA projects that often lose its way and is trying to find how to make the best money possible instead of making the best game as possible. This game had a message, it had a great direction, and it was just well executed and well done. And it's co-op! Yeah. Go try it out. What <laughs> made it? <laughs> you almost died. <laughs> Why know. were you running into the mole again? <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> I think Alex died 52 times. But, yeah, you know what? Who's counting? to 32. But who's counting, we were, right? We were counting every single one. It's okay if nobody was counting. <laughs> well, that's it for 2021. So there was a lot of good games. In fact, I had my list extend like five more games. There are good ones if you go searching for it in 2021. But I'm not gonna lie. It kind of was a down year. I personally didn't hit any of those games at a, a 10 out of 10. Maybe some of the indie ones can get really high there, but it, I just felt it was a tiny bit of a down year and a lot of it was pushed into 2022. So we have a massive 2020.
2022 that is going to exhaust us. So tell me, what was your best games of 2021? Leave it down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys on the next list and the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.